After you've learned about Boolean algebra, it is time to talk about binary numbers. Welcome! I'm Kons, I got a master's degree in computer science and currently work as a graduate research assistant in computer science. And I'm here to teach you computer science together with Python. Binary numbers are based on the Boolean algebra, for which you can find a video up here. The storage of your computer, be it a hard drive, an SSD or your main memory, is fundamentally built out of tiny little cells that store an electric or magnetic charge. When a charge is present in those cells, it can be interpreted as a 1 or true when thinking about the Boolean algebra, and when no charge is present, this can be interpreted as 0 or false. Those cells are called bits. But how can those arrays of 1s and zeros store complex data like images or videos? Before answering that question, it is important to talk about the difference between continuous and discrete data. The classic physics we experience in our daily lives is continuous. Think about a car that has a constant acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. When we plot that acceleration on a graph where we have t on the x-axis, which is the time, and our acceleration on the y-axis, we can see that is a continuous line. If we want to describe the velocity of that car, we can draw another plot also with the time t on the x-axis and the velocity in meters per second on the y-axis. And then we are going to draw this line, which stems from the formula v equals v0, which is our initial velocity, plus the acceleration over time. We can see that when we accelerate from our initial velocity v0, that we have a continuous line going from v0 to another value without skipping any other value. And we can also look at the amount of distance our car is driving. For another plot we have t and x in meters, which is described in x equals v0, which is our initial velocity over time, plus half our accelerations time squared. And when we plot that we can see we have a parabola. And all those functions or all those graphs that I have drawn here are continuous. There are no gaps and there are no sharp edges. When you want to go from one point to another, you have to go through all other points. And if you want to go from your initial velocity to another velocity, you have to go through all the points. You can't go from zero to this velocity because that is against the laws of physics. There's actually a mathematical definition on what continuous means. But for our purposes, the definition I just introduced will suffice. If you want to draw the graphs I've just shown by hand, if you only got a piece of paper, a pencil and a calculator, you would usually go about it by entering different values of t and then marking them in the plot. So for a it's easy because for every t a is 2 and we can mark that in our plot and then we can draw a line through it. For v, we first mark our initial point, which is our initial velocity, and then we enter different t's, and we can see we have a linear growth here. And for x, which, is, which represents the distance our car has traveled, we are going to enter a parabola. We start with zero, and then we slowly grow, and the graphs we have drawn now are discrete because there's no line connecting those points which are only defined for specific t's. And everything that is stored in a computer is stored as a discrete value. And if you like this video so far make sure to give it a like so it can spread to more people and more people can start to learn about binary numbers. All the numbers you interact with in your daily life are discrete. Think about the balance on your bank account, the number of friends you have or the speed of a car at a fixed point of time. And additionally, all those numbers are decimal numbers. Decimal means by the power of 10. If we take, for example, the number 2345 and go from left to right, then every number represents a number range that is 10 times higher than the number before. So we can write 2345 as 2000 plus 300 plus 40 plus 5. And those can be expressed by the power of 10. So 2000 can be expressed as 2 times 10 to the power of 3 plus 3 times 10 to the power of 2 plus 4 times 10 to the power of 1 plus 5 times 10 to the power of 0. And remember that the power of 0 to anything is always 1. 
In front of every power of 10, we can write a digit from 0 to 9. And this leads us to the general representation of a decimal number in a sum form. So we have a sum over n digits with i going starting from 0. We have our digit in front of our power of 10, ai, and then we take 10 by the power of i. This is the general form on how to represent a decimal number. But what do we do if we only got zeros and ones? We build a number system of base 2. So every digit represents not 10, a 10 times higher range of numbers, but only a 2 times higher range of numbers. So our first digit would represent a 0, the second a 1, the next one a 2, then we have a 4, an 8, 16, 32, and 64. Because all of those are 2 by the power of x. If we take, for example, 23, we can see that 23 is composed out of 16 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. And as those numbers are all powers of 2, we can write it down as 2 by the power of 4 plus 2 by the power of 2 plus 2 by the power of 1 plus 2 by the power of 0. And our digits represent how often we are going to multiply the power of 2. But we only got the digits 1 and 0. So how would we represent 23 then? 23 is then 1 times 2 over 4 plus 0 times 2 to the power of 3 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 2 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 1 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 0. And when we only take the digits and write them down, we get 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. And this is the binary representation of the decimal number 23. To make clear that we have a decimal and a binary number, we can use subscript numbers indicating the base. Like here we have 23 and when we have base 10, which equals 1, 0, 1, 1, to the base of 2. Now we have seen how to turn a decimal number into a binary number. But how can we get those digits for the binary number without guessing them? First up, we could use Python. In the interactive mode, we're going to define a new variable x3. And then we're going to use a formatted print statement. So we enter print f and then double quotes. And inside those double quotes, we're going to enter braces. And in those braces, we're going to enter x. That means in that string, x will be represented as string. And now we are adding a modifier after the x with a colon and enter b. That tells Python to interpret that string as a binary number and print out a binary number of x. We press enter. We get the binary representation of 3, which is 1, 1. And that is true because the first bit is 1 and the second bit is 2 and when we add both together we get 3. But you can also convert a decimal number into a binary number only with a pen and a piece of paper. For that we're going to use our example 23 again. And now we're going to divide 23 by 2 with a remainder. This will result in 11 with a remainder of 1. Now we take the 11 and divided by 2 again. This will result in 5 with a remainder of 1. Then we're going to divide 5 by 2, which will result in 2, again with a remainder of 1. Then we're going to divide 2 by 2, which is 1, and we don't have a remainder, so we have remainder 0. And then we're going to divide 1 by 2, which results in 0, with a remainder of 1. And when we have reached the result 0, we can stop our calculation. When we now go from bottom to top and write down all the remainders, we get 1, 0, 1, 1. And this is the binary representation of 23. And now, how can we get a decimal number when we got a binary number? For that, we can use Python again. And in Python, we're actually able to enter a binary number by starting the number with 0b and then entering the digits of our binary number. So over here I entered x as a binary with the digits 1, 0, 1, 1, 1 
and when we let x print we can see it is our 23 again. But we can also do this conversion from a binary to a decimal number by hand. If we remember the general representation of a binary number in the sum form, we can see that every digit represents a power of 2. So if we take the binary number 101011, we just write it down in its sum form, which is 1 times 2 to the power of 5, because we start with 0 on this side, and this is 5, plus 0, 2 times 2 to the power of 4, plus 1, 2 times 2 to the power of 3, plus 0 ti times 2 to the power of 2, plus 1 times 2 to the power of 1, plus 1 times 2 to the power of 0. And this is 32 plus 0 plus 8 plus 0 plus 2 plus 1. And when we add all those numbers together, we get 43 as our decimal representation for our binary number. Converting decimal numbers into binary numbers concludes this video. You've learned the difference between continuous and discrete data, how to represent numbers in the binary format, and how to convert decimal numbers to binary numbers and the other way around. I encourage you to try out all the things you have seen yourself, and for that I'm giving you a quick assignment. Try to convert the number 10365 to binary with the methods we have seen, and then try to convert this long binary number into decimal. If you got any questions on this video, make sure to let me know down below in the comments and join our lovely Discord community if you want to catch up with me. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified when I release a new video. Big shout out to my Patreon subscribers for their support and if you want to learn how to add and subtract binary numbers from each other, check out this video over here.